Uh, we could miss uh, Adidas all over. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> so how much money did you get yeah. from them? <laughs> oh, we didn't get any money from Adidas. Um, that was a re I really wanted them though. I mean, Nike's great. <laughs> and um, Puma, all those other, we, for our kickoff, we got Puma to give us stuff. For, um, I really wanted Adidas because um, it's, the brand is so a million miles away, you can see it because of the stripes. And I knew that, that young people respond so strongly to fashion statements. I'm a des I design my film, so I'm really into design ideas and fashion and all that stuff that's important to me. But I knew that that would, that just takes it to a completely different level in their eyes. Because David Beckham is sponsored by Adidas and all these other people. So if you have a major name like that. And with Nike, you have to get really close, but with Adidas, you can see it a mile away. So that was it. I had to have Adidas. And it took me three years, I think, to find a way. We'd write to them, we'd send them stuff, we'd invite them. No response, no response, no response. And then finally, we broke through. And they gave us, they gave us about, and they only gave us, to be honest, about 15% of the clothes you see. So the rest of it, it was all I have. I'm a dancer, so I have a lot of stuff. I costume all my films. I have a big, huge walk-in you know, wardrobe of stuff. So I got all the Adidas stuff out, made all the actors bring their Adidas stuff. It's because it, even though they were only giving us 15%, I wanted them to endorse us. I wanted them to get behind us. And, um, and they were, here's the clothes, goodbye. And no, 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 no. We wanted them to put, um, as you saw, I think, supported by Adidas. We wanted sponsored, but they wouldn't say that but was supported by Adidas was a big thing because I knew that would legitimise us for youth culture. So, the, um, so I spent a lot of money on Adidas myself. And, um, and it really does pay off. Kids watch it and they're immediately like, where'd you get the shoes, man? Where'd you get the shoes? I like that OD. Yeah. They really get into that. And it's really important for them to see gay characters or bisexual characters wearing things that they want. And then think, so they can't say, oh, those trainers are so gay because they want those trainers. You know, like my really cool ones with the yellow. Did you, did you see those? The bee thing. Love those. And the um, and they see those and they're just like they want to eat them. <laughs> so the Adidas was crucial, and I'm really, really grateful and proud that they got behind us because they don't do that for anybody. So it was a big thing. Was it was it annoying? Did you get Adidas out? No, no, it's okay. I feel cool, cool. Because uh, as a designer, I really wanted to make that work. And, um, and Adidas came to see the film and they, they loved it and they were really, really thrilled. They used bits of the film, that's a big achievement, on there. I know it's all very corporate and everything, but I really want to take the corporate thing and use it for good, because it's there. And, um, and it was great to see that they used our film on their advertising and in their, in, in, you know, that they were proud and they were actually using our ads instead of just theirs. <laughs> I guess they were not very crazy about your pink clothes from Maybe the very not. beginning. Everyone loves my pink. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I would like to close down, I would like to finish this with two short questions. The first one is very easy. In 2002, you made a documentary, Roots of Homophobia. Yes. And I was joking when I was saying that it's easy, but what do you think are the roots of homophobia? That was a finding out about reggae music and why it's so homophobic in Jamaica, where it's really, really crazily homophobic. Um, and that the roots there were two things, religion and um, or misuse of religion. But the main thing was colonialism. Um, black people originally in Africa were happy with, they'd, they would, um, gay people or transgender people were really important in the tribes and loved, or many tribes. And, and, um, and then the missionaries came and suddenly they were ashamed of being naked and all of that stuff. And so they associate any deviancy um, with being, with savages. And so they're ashamed of it. And so they're over, so all they have all these laws that were put in place by the British government in Jamaica and all over the Caribbean and Africa by various governments that were not African. And they, they're clinging onto them as overcompensating and that's what was going on there. But why is homophobia all through the world? It's because... Uh, it's because we are... We are some, a part of us is still in the cave and we are terrified that if anybody breaks rank, if, everybody, if anybody diversifies, that we won't be strong as a tribe. 
But of course, what got us out of the cave, cave was our diversity. The person who put their hand up and said, let's try this thing of fire. Let, I've made this wheel, let's have a go. What do you think? <laughs> and, you know, and a lot, all through history, we all know the whole thing of um, Galileo and how, you know, and when people said the world was round and all of that, people, people wanted to kill them, literally wanted to torture and kill them. So people fight our diversity when it's not healthy for us. But it's a natural thing to do that, but it's even more natural to overcome it, bring them the wheel, bring them the fire, bring them airplanes, and bring them homosexuality, bisexuality, transgender, and all the other things that are coming that we haven't even thought of yet. So it's our job to take everyone forward out of the caves, even though they're a little bit afraid. In 2008, the Independent on Sunday listed you as one of the most influential gay people in UK. Hint, hint, where I knew that you were gay. Uh, so, one of the most influential gay people in UK. So, what does that mean? Gay mafia or something? <laughs> It means if I wear it, you buy it. I'm an influence. I don't know what it means, but it's very handy. It is really cool because when I'm trying to raise money for something or trying to um, make something happen, then it's embarrassing, but then I say, yes, let's put it on the press release. Ricky Beetle Blair is one of the hundred most influential gay people in there. But what does it mean? Uh, who isn't influential? Every single person is influential. We are the weather. We are the landscape, and all you, you can change the world just by smiling. If you smile, the world around you is changed instantly. Everyone has that power. So what I've been given by that newspaper is the power to tell other people that they are one of the most influential gay people in the world. So, who's gay, who's not? <laughs> Harry Potter. Which one? Oh, Harry Potter. <laughs> no one's that gay. The, uh, which one, which one are you after? I'm just asking. <laughs> ah, you're not asking for yourself. Um, okay, um, do you really want to know? Yeah. Well, it's hard to tell, because you know there are 40 actors in the film. And, um, and so, <laughs> well, I can tell, you know, I mean, I can, they all had to sleep with me, so. Because <laughs> for me, there's only, there's only um, two kinds of sexuality anyway. People who sleep with me <laughs> and everyone else. <laughs> and they all sleep with me, so they, the, uh, what am I saying? Okay, I will stop now. The, uh, um, out of the six um, main actors, um, only one of them is gay. Um, and it's Stephen, the Chinese one. And he has become, he's, oh, he's out as gay. I mean, some of them might be gay and not be saying, but the, um, we've certainly had that happening. Um, but he, um, he is the one who is an icon. It's amazing to see the letters he gets. He's doing incredibly well. He starred in a musical recently. He, uh, it's great to see when he gets interviewed, and people say to him, is it difficult being Chinese? Is it difficult being gay? And he says, I'm working. I'm working and I'm, I'm, you're, I'm here, you're asking me this question. It's working really well for me. So he's so positive and, and courageous about it. And I'm so unbelievably proud of him. Um, all the people in the, um, the youth group, I, um, I auditioned every actor in the film. I asked them what they would, if they would be ambassadors for this cause. And we had interviews about that before auditioning them just finding out if they were passionate enough to go to schools and go around the world and talk about it. So all of them said yes, and some, um, and, and I, some of them, I didn't ask anybody who was gay, but I presumed that everyone in the gay youth group was gay. And, um, and then, of course, the ones who looked the most gay were the ones who weren't, and they all kept surprising me, but they were all very passionate about that. But basically everybody in that group is gay. Um, and, um, and the more gay looking they are, the less likely they are to be gay in that group. And then through the rest of the film, there are lots of gay actors, bisexual actors, and um, they, um, and, uh, but they don't play into the, you know, you can't tell which is which. Does that, I mean, does that, that make sense? Um, so, there, I mean, yes, it is, it's like holes in cheese. There are gay people all over that film, but not in the obvious, always in the obvious things. But I'm afraid if you liked one of the six and it wasn't Stephen, they're not gay. <laughs>
Okay, Ricky, thank you very much. It was great having you. Thanks for the work that you do. We liked the movie very much, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah.